Sooner or later, everyone needs to create a diagram or maybe a few. When that time comes, majority of people will consult Google by searching something like diagrams or diagram tool or diagram maker. And all the results, at least on the first page of Google search, will likely be leading towards a graphical user interface or GUI type of a tool. It could be a desktop application or a web application. But that's not what I want. I am a software engineer, first and foremost. I write code and I store it in Git. I write scripts and I store those scripts in Git. I write documentation, markdown files, and I store those in Git as well. You get the point, right? Almost everything I do is done in plain text format and it can be interpreted by machines and is stored in Git. I use graphical user interface tools only to observe the results of my work, not to do the work itself with one notable exception. Everything I write or do is done through Visual Studio Code. That's my graphical user interface. It allows me to browse files, to write code or any other text, and it gives me a terminal to run commands. Except for a browser and Slack, it is the only, and I repeat, only tool that constantly runs on all my machines. Now, the reason why I use Visual Studio Code for almost everything is very simple. It is faster and less error prone for me to write everything as code and run commands than any other way of doing things. It is certainly faster and better than clicking buttons and dragging and dropping stuff in a GUI tool. Now, you might be asking, hey, why is Victor talking about this? Well, I wanted to create diagrams as code, to keep that code in Git, to visualize those diagrams in GitHub repos, and to write and preview those diagrams in Visual Studio Code. Now, it's been a while since I needed to create diagrams, but all that changed a few weeks ago. I started working on a project that would greatly benefit from a diagram, actually from a set of diagrams. So I started on a mission on finding a way to do it from VS Code. I wanted diagrams as code type of solution and I found just the right tool. It's not a new one, it's been around for a long while, but I haven't used it that heavily in the past. And that something is called Mermaid. It allows me to write diagrams as code, it allows me to write them inside markdown files, it allows me to preview them in VS Code, it allows me to visualize them in GitHub repos. All in all, it's just the solution I need and I want to share it with you today. To begin with, Mermaid allows us to create almost any type of diagram known to man. It can be a flow chart or a sequence or a gun chart or a class diagram or git flow or entities, relations between entities. Now, as always, I will not continue speaking for long. That's boring. Uh, so let's jump into hands-on part. Let me create a diagram and while doing that, explore some of the many, and I repeat, many features it offers. So here's my Visual Studio code in a lower resolution mode, so as you can see it well. And I have a markdown file open on the left side and I have a preview open on the right side. And I can do the things that you normally do in markdown. I can write a title and I can write some description. Now, you already know all that, so I'm going to skip that part, skip what you can do in Markdown and jump straight into Mermaid, right? We can create uh, Mermaid diagrams just by writing a code block and code in Markdown is uh, surrounded by three ticks. It could be one tick, but don't do that. With three ticks and we typically specify the type of the code we want to present and in this case that's Mermaid. So that's how GitHub and VS Code know that this is Mermaid something. Now it all starts by defining the type of the chart we want and today I'm using flowchart and that is followed in this case by TD meaning top down. So I want top down not left right or right left or whatever other options are. I want a top down 
flowchart. What you will notice is that GitHub Copilot is kicking in and offering suggestions. At the very beginning, those suggestions are kind of silly, but they will improve over time. Actually, Copilot is one of the big reasons why I like Mermaid, because once I developed, once I progressed with my uh, charts, it started offering intelligent suggestions, which is absolutely awesome. So I do not write my charts all by myself. I use Copilot for that. If you're not familiar with Copilot, the link is over there. There is the video I created. It's just uh, watch it, not now, later. Now, another thing before we proceed that you will notice is that there is a preview on the right side. It's not working perfectly well today, but that's mostly, I think, because my resolution, I lowered the resolution drastically so that everything is bigger, so that you can see it well on your screen. But you need to trust me that it works well most of the time. Anyways, let me define the first node of a chart. I'm going to call it setup-dev. And then in brackets, I'm going to put a text, right? So if you don't want the text to be the same as the name of a node, then you just put it in brackets for now. And you can see on the right side that we got a tiny box with rounded corners called setup. And I'm going to create a second node. I'm going to call it BCI. And since this is not understandable to everybody, but it is good as the name of the node, I'm going to put a text in brackets, build container image in dev. As I mentioned earlier, the preview is freaking out today. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to close the files and open it again to refresh the preview and hopefully that will fix the issue. And there we go. Now it's working well. So I have two nodes so far set up and build container image in dev. Sometimes you might want to change the shape of a node. So for example, I might want to uh, depict setup as a circle instead of rounded square. And I can do that by changing uh, the format of the brackets to something else. And in this case, circle is double brackets. So if I surround setup text with double brackets, I get a circle. Now the question comes, how do we connect one node with another? And we can do that by typing the ID of one node, which is setup dev in this case, and then dash dash greater than, and then the second name of the node, the name of the second node, and you can see that those two got connected right now. Sometimes you might want to enable people to click on some node in a graph and be redirected somewhere else to create a link. And we can do that by saying, hey, whenever somebody clicks on, in this case, BCI, this is the link where they should be redirected. And I want it to open in a blank page, blank tab, a new tab. Now, blank instruction does not really work in GitHub, but it works in other places. Anyways, you can create links as well. What else can we do? Well, we can do actually many things, but what should I show next? Yeah, let's change the color of the node, of one of the nodes, and we can do that by specifying style. I want to style PCI, and I can do many things with styles. In this case, I'm going to fill it with blue color and poof, now it's blue. So let me create a couple of more things. Let's say that I want to branch from the blue box now into a couple of boxes. So I'm going to create BCI Lima. That's going to be one option to build with Lima. And I'm going to connect those two by saying BCI dash dash greater than BCI Lima. And then I'm going to specify a second node, which would be about build packs. That's a second way how we can build images. I'm going to connect it with the general purpose build one by saying, hey, BCI dash dash, you know, BCI build packs. And I'm going to create a third branch, which will be BCI KBLD, because that's the third way we can build stuff with Carvel KBLD or Carvel KBuild. And I'm going to connect it with BCI as well by typing BCI dash build. And then after I present all the options, I can uh, create another one and say, hey, now you need to store in a registry your image, the image that you built, and the registry will be used no matter which build method we used. So it means that I'm going to connect the three nodes, uh, Lima, BuildPux, and KBLD, KBuild with the registry node. I'm going to paint it blue, and voila, I have a diagram of flow of very beginning of a flow that starts with building an image 
using different tools and then going uh, for a registry where we should push images. And I can change color of that. I, use, I tend to use red when I want to say I haven't finished the code for this part yet. Uh, anyways, we can style it differently. We can uh, connect it differently. The arrows you're seeing can be shaped differently as well. There's a lot of customizations, a lot of options that we can employ when using Mermaid. Sometimes we might want to group things into subgraphs, into group of nodes, uh, yeah, subgraph, and we can do that by saying, hey, uh, there's a subgraph called dev in this case, everything that is within it and until it ends with end instruction is one subgraph and then it will paint it within another box, yet another box. And I will create yet another subgraph called previews after we build the image and what's or not, we might want to jump into going and creating previews of our application. So that's another subgraph and I can connect not only nodes of the graph, but also subgraphs by using the same logic as before, dev dash dash greater than previews. I can connect anything with anything with any many of the types of connectors, even though I'm using arrows today. And uh, what else should I do? Actually, I will let you explore it yourself. I can add more nodes and do the things, do almost anything that I need to do to create graphs. The only thing I cannot do is control exactly where each box will be, but that's silly to do because uh, the moment we change graphs, it should change dynamically instead of fast dragging and dropping things, right? And once we're finished and finished writing the code and finished previewing it, seeing how it looks like, uh, the last thing missing is to export or visualize our graph, our diagram so that others can see it, others can use it. There are many ways we can do that. Uh, there are some Node.js libraries, we can export them to files and so on and so forth, but I'm not going to do any of those. What I'm going to do is simply push this file to a Git repo and then let GitHub visualize it for me as part of my readme or part of my markdown. Now, I'm not going to push this file there. I'm going to push the one that I'm working on right now. And actually I already pushed it, but I'm going to show it to you how it looks like from GitHub. So let me navigate to the file in question. And there we go. That's the graph that I'm working on right now. This is a real thing. This is not a demo. And Mermaid was a perfect fit. I love it. And by the way, I'm revealing something that I shouldn't reveal because this is kind of a secret. This is a big thing that me and Whitney are working on in 2023. So far, uh, can't, I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything, but it's very exciting and you should look for it in uh, late January more or less, we'll start a big project for which I need diagrams. And I hope that you will like it. But anyways, let me go back to the subject. Let's talk about Mermaid. Should you use it? Is it the right thing for you? If you want to have living documentation that is easy to update, you almost certainly want to keep that documentation close to the code or projects it documents. That means that you might want to keep the docs in the same repository as the code. If diagrams are part of that documentation, it makes sense, perfect sense, to define them in same markdown files as the rest of the documentation instead of creating them somewhere else and then exporting images and then embedding them into the docs and you know all the madness that we've been doing in the past. Anyways, and probably most importantly, if you are a developer, you're likely not the person that likes getting things done by clicking buttons and dragging and dropping stuff. That's why Mermaid is amazing. It is a perfect tool for developers to create diagrams. It is code, so an ID like VS Code is a perfect tool to write and preview Mermaid diagrams. VS Code preview might be a bit rough around the edges, especially while writing, it might not refresh itself perfectly, but it works most of the time. What I didn't mention is that for you to get Preview or Mermaid, you need to install an add-on, but that shouldn't be a problem. So just install the add-on or a plugin or whatever it's called in VS Code or whichever editor you're using. On top of all that, the ability to display diagrams in GitHub repos is a huge plus. Even if GitHub is not your thing, 
there are plenty of other ways to visualize mermaid or to export diagrams in as images so check out the documentation personally i love github and i love the fact that you can just visualize it as part of your markdown in your github repos finally and equally important github copilot's ability to offer suggestions is a cherry on top of the cake uh, it helped me a lot I would just start typing something for Mermaid and Copilot would finish it and most of the time, after a bit of training, it worked perfectly. All in all, Mermaid combined with GitHub and with Visual Studio Code is absolutely awesome. Use it if you need diagrams and you are a developer. If you're not a developer, if you're not an engineer and you are, let's say, manager, well, I mean, I'm certain that you are not since you would not reach this far into this video. So my advice for non-engineers does not matter in this case. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.